Boys. Yay. Do we have any housekeeping today? There's a quiz on Friday. Um, so you don't have to memorize it for the quiz, but I will make you aware that uh, they will not be on the test, but I actually pasted the solubility rules onto the quiz and also the oxidation rules. Um, because I know you're still practicing those, I'm going to be gone. And so if you have that question, then um, my uh, assistant may not feel comfortable putting that on the board, so I just gave it to you. Is that okay? There's also a periodic table on the last page um, in case you can't read this one. All right? So just let you know that. Um, it's about two pages of questions, one page of multiple choice, and one page of short answer calculations. Cool? Current version, anyway. Any other housekeeping? We're going to finish up the Esther Lab this week. So you guys are going to get to run an IR, um, hopefully NMR, still don't know yet, um, and uh, melting points. And so we'll try to verify whether you and your partner made the same thing or whether you made anything at all because we'll compare the uh, spectra of the starting material and, and to what you made. And those spectra, they're kind of like photographs. Can you guys tell the same person in a picture? Like, if you don't know them, but you're online and you're cruising around and you see the same person two or three times, can you tell, even if from different angles, you can tell they're the same person, right? You guys with me? Yeah, well, spectra are like that. They're like photographs. And so they're just pictures of chemicals with, uh, instead of visible light, with a different part of the spectrum. And so molecules are very characteristic and it allows us to identify parts of them I mean, can you sometimes tell brothers and sisters do they look so much alike? Family members? Yeah. And so closely related things will have commonalities, um, but they'll also have differences. And so we're going to learn about that in lab. It's kind of fun, right? And then the next week we're going to do some stuff in lab. And today we're going to talk about some stuff that applies to that. And so, like I said, I brought some toys. And we're going to learn how to do some calculations because you know how much you guys love calculations right and then we're going to um, also uh, talk about uh, concentrations and those types of things okay so we're, we're going to start with uh, the term molarity okay so we're going to use molarity in our calculations so we need to have a clear definition of what it is and it's the number of moles of solute per liter of solution number of moles of solute per liter of solution. Now, when I ask you what the solute is, how are you gonna to respond to that by definition? The solute is normally in the smaller amount, right? Right? And, well, in fact, when we're doing it as chemists, we know that amount, we measure it, and then that allows us to determine the concentration, right? We measure the amounts of solvent and solute, and so we can use that as a tool. Anyway, so this is part of your toolbox right now. So right now, I want you to try to calculate with me um, an example. So five grams of sodium chloride in 250 milliliter solution. Um, what's the, well, how do you do all of this? How do, I mean, what even concentration would that make? Can we calculate that? Yeah. Yeah, we can. So let's talk about that. Let's let's actually, if I if I know the mass, then that means I can just take my sodium chloride and I can weigh it out in five grams, and then I can put it in there in my 250 and I can dissolve it. We're gonna do a second problem where we actually do it more like what I would do in lab, or more commonly do in lab. Okay? Instead of getting five grams, usually we say we need a certain volume of a concentration and I'll show you how to do that calculation too, okay? But in this case, we're gonna calculate the concentration of this solution, and how do I go about that? How do I find the concentration of this solution of sodium chloride? I'm gonna take the grams and divide by the molecular weight, right? And that's gonna give me what? What does that give me? The moles. And then I'm going to divide that by the volume that I'm putting in, but what units do I need to be in? Liters. Liters, okay? So that means if I have 5.00 
grams NaCl times 58.44. Is that right? Oops. Uh, one mole NaCl over 58.44 grams. Now, I, I, I literally did not calculate that. I was on the elevator and I was looking down and there it is right there. You guys with me? Yeah. So uh, I didn't do that in my head just to let you know. I, I did too. Now I have moles of sodium chloride. And so, but if I put an equal sign, that has mole in a CL. But what do I really want to divide by? The liters to get the concentration, right? So can I put that in the same calculation right now? I, I can, and that's what I normally do. I usually put like a big division line, right? Because I'm adding to this calculation, okay? And I'm gonna add the volume. Now I can, well, we'll do the conversion. We have 250 milliliters, right? Times one liter over 1,000 milliliters, right? And so now that puts my units of volume into liters. And now I have moles per liter, or remember that that big M equals mole per liter, okay? Now, I almost always write the units out. I seldom use the big M, okay? Because what am I doing always when I do my calculation? Dimensional analysis. I'm canceling those units to make sure that what? I end up with the right answer. Okay? Or at least unit wise, the correct answer. It doesn't mean I didn't push my calculator on. Cool? All right. So, anybody have this? I got 1,168. 1,168. Yeah, I got 0.342. It's probably that thousand. Let's see, you know what? I'm not sure what you did. It's order of operation, I can promise you. Okay, it's order of operation, whatever happened there. All right, so there's an example calculation. And then to actually do it, I mean, you would weigh out some solid, you would put it into your volumetric flask, you would only fill about halfway, you would swirl until it dissolves. Now, I want to caution you, sometimes things are really slow to dissolve, and so instead of putting them in directly into the volumetric flask, you put them in a beaker, literally, and you take the beaker, you put your salt in the beaker, you put a stir bar in it, and you set it on a stir plate, and you let it set and stir for a while. You might even add some heat if, that's, if it's a chemical that the heat would aid in its dissolving. Okay, then you would transfer the liquid to the volumetric flask and dilute to volume. So you would want to make sure you have definitely less in here, and in fact, about half the volume of your uh, volumetric flask, and then that gives you the opportunity to double rinse so that you do a quantitative transfer uh, when you're doing that, okay? Quantitative is important when we're doing what we're talking about right now, okay? You don't want to leave molecules behind because that changes the expected concentration. Right? We measure things very accurately. All right, so I want to do a different calculation. I want to do it in the same fashion that we would do it in a chemical prep for a laboratory. We're going to use the same compound, but instead we're going to say I need 100 milliliters of a 0 0.100 molar NaCl solution. Okay, so notice I've changed the, the units to concentration to start with. So that means that I have a concentration I know I need, right? You guys with me? I have a concentration that I know I need, and I know a volume, so now I need to see how many grams of NaCl I'm gonna weigh out. You guys with me? That's the way it really works most of the time, okay? So this is the way we would calculate that. Now, how do I begin this? So I have, 
moles per liter here, and I have liters here, don't I? I have milliliters, but I'm going to convert those to liters, right? So I have the concentration and I have volume, so that means I can convert that to what? What unit? Moles, right? And then from moles, then I can go to grams of sodium chloride, right? You guys with me? So let's start that. And normally I would, um, I can start with either one of those in this case. But I'm just, can I do a mental conversion? How many people can shift a decimal place three places in their head? All right? So when you have milliliters and you've done it so many times, can you just look at this and go, this is 0 0.100 liters? Yeah, I think you can, okay? I'm just gonna say that out loud. That, but if you're not comfortable with that, what should you do? Set it up and do the conversion and cancel units, okay? So NaCl times 0 0.100 mole per liter. So now I've got the liters canceled. I've got moles of NaCl. What's my next step? I need to convert to grams, so I need that conversion factor. And so that's times 58.44 grams per mole. All right, and now my moles cancel, and this equals grams. So my prep people do these calculations every day because we have known concentration solutions. We prepare for you to do your labs. And they base it on the number, they actually have an additional step to this because if we have 80 students, then we have a per student amount that's needed. We multiply that out to the total volume. We add anywhere from 10 to 50%, depending on what it is and what you guys are doing, okay? And then we calculate for that larger volume. You guys with me? Yeah. So those numbers vary every semester, right? The number of pairs that we have. And so that's why we have it set up in that fashion. So we don't over prepare or under prepare. Cool? You guys with me? Yeah. And anybody have this number? 0 0.5844. 0 0.584 grams in ACL. I took that down to the number of significant figures that we need. Okay, you guys with me? And so now, what do I do? How do I do that? The, for weighing this, I would come to my balance and it's not plugged in at the moment. Now, and I also don't want to open my chemicals until I'm ready to measure. Why not? That moisture moves in and out from the atmosphere. You guys with me? So we want to keep them dry if we can. And so I need, what did I say? 0 0.584. Oh, I didn't wait. You know what it's doing right now? It's stabilizing. It's actually out of balance too, so it won't give me an accurate weight. Are we worried about that? Not at the moment. No. I got our air conditioning working. Yeah. So once I get that, then I want.
want to try to quantitatively transfer this, right? That's what I'm showing you guys. And so what I would do is take my way boat, and if I'm using a way boat in this fashion, and they're fairly flexible, and so they're very nice to funnel things with. I can actually take a piece of paper and roll that up and make a funnel out of it, right? Or way on paper, and it does the same thing. And then what I want to do is make sure that I have all of the salt off of the way boat because I'm trying to measure very accurately. And so what I'm gonna do is literally rinse my way boat into my flask. You with me? So that when we're doing it very accurately, that's what we would want to do. And then I'm gonna make sure that I wash all of the chemical down into the bottom of the flask. Cool. And I'm gonna fill it to about 50% volume. And what am I gonna do? I'm gonna swirl. Till what? It's all dissolved. Now, I'm gonna tell you there are a number of chemicals that if I dissolve that amount, then it would actually change the temperature of the solution. Okay? And then I would wanna make sure that it comes back to room temperature before I put an additional volume in there. You guys with me? Why? What changes with temperature? Maybe the density? As it gets hotter, it becomes less dense, right? And so if you fill to the mark when it's hot and you come back an hour later and it's room temperature, what's going on? It's going to have increased in density, so its volume diminishes and it will no longer be on the mark. Right. Ideally, it should be done at the temperature marked on the volumetric flask, which is 20 degrees C. Okay, ideally. We have a little trouble with that in our building. Now, this is dissolved, right? Would you guys agree with that? And so then I would just go ahead and fill it to the mark. If I have larger volume, I would use a funnel and pour up to a point where it's in the neck, right? And Ooh, a little shy. Out of practice. Yeah, not bad. So, what do we have? What have we made? A 100 milliliter volume of a 0.1 molar sodium chloride solution. You guys see how to do that? Was that nicer than just explaining it to be able to see the steps and how you would do that? Yeah, that's what I'm hoping, okay? So I brought that along just for that. Now, I actually brought some stuff from lab this week too because it's related. And number one, I, I actually did some of this in the video that I made this morning, but I went ahead and brought it too. When we store a burette, how should it be stored? Down. Upside down with what? Valve. Valve open, okay? You always store that way so the solution doesn't accumulate the tip. If it accumulates there and evaporates, any salt that's in solution will crystallize and it will plug the tip, okay? And then uh, gin campers don't realize it's partially plugged and they go really, really slow. Right, so I'm trying to help you out, right? Yeah, all right. So we flip it over and we close the valve and we can use a funnel, right? When I'm using a funnel, then always remember you take a thumb and you lift the funnel so it doesn't seal around the top because if it does, it will burp and the funnel will jump up and you'll spray whatever it is you're trying to put in there. Okay, you guys with me? So I want to make sure that I vent it. And then the other thing, if I'm going to fill this, what do I do? Make sure it's below my eyes, right? And so I've made a solution. I'm going to use it to titrate with. And so I would start filling that burette with it. Now, does it have to be exactly on zero? No, I just need to know exactly where it's at. You guys with me? And so if I'm reading this, and I want you guys all to do this because we're having a little bit of trouble getting everybody on board, okay? 
if I'm reading this, then right now it is, oh, get open pen. It is definitely past six and point one, point two. So I'm gonna put marks on the board. Did you read it? Do what? I haven't yet. Oh, I'm just, oh gosh, thank you so much. You know what I forgot to do? Clear the tip. I didn't even rinse the burette, did I? So if there was another chemical in there, should you rinse it with your titrant before you fill it? Absolutely. Okay, so I didn't do that and I didn't clear my tip, but my tip's clear now. So we're there. Okay, now I'm gonna have to reread it. Just messed me up. Just kidding. All right, so seven, 7.5 and 8. Okay, you guys with me? And then there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 7.6, 7.7, 7.8, 7.9. Right, you guys with me? 8. Okay. That meniscus is. Right about there. How do I read that? It's depth to the bottom of the meniscus. It's definitely past 7.5. Would you guys agree with that? 7.5, right? Yeah. Okay. And then 7.6, 7.7. .7. Oops, 7. It's not past 7.7, .7, is it? Sorry. 7.6. And then is it closer to the 6 or the 7? To the 7. How much closer? So three quarters of the way, would you guys say? From 0.6 to 0.7? So that could be 0.7 or, point, or 0.07 or 0.08, right? So I'm estimating that. Now, what do we know about that last digit? It's uncertain, I'm guessing, right? But it should be read to that uncertain figure. I know it's past seven, I know it's past 0.6. I'm guessing the last digit, right? A burette should always have two sig figs to the right of that decimal place. Should I put a zero on there when it's a zero? Yes, if it were right on the mark, then I would use a zero, okay? But I would still show that, okay? I wanted everybody to see that again one more time. And then I would do my delivery and I would have my volume initial, that would be it. I would do my delivery, I'll have my volume final and the difference between those is what went into whatever I'm doing. Cool? All right. We're going to do that in lab next week, that type of thing. Now, there's another part of this that I want you to see. Okay? And that's we're going to actually use a weighing vial this week. Okay? Now, you notice how I used a weigh boat to do the first chemical. Okay? Out of convenience with large containers, that's usually the best way to do it. But we're going to dry this chemical. This is potassium hydrogen phthalate, right? KHP is the abbreviation for it. That is not the chemical formula. I know that's confusing, but it's not. But this device I would put on the balance, okay? It's been dried in an oven, literally with the top off. And then you take it and put it into a desiccator and you let it cool. So a desiccator removes moisture from the atmosphere. It's got chemicals in there that absorb the water. Right? So we're trying to make sure that there's no water in this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the container onto the balance and I'm going to hit a zero or tear. Okay, you guys with me? Now, I didn't bring the smaller scoop I wish I had. Okay, we have a small scoop that are scoops that you guys can use with these. Okay, now I think you're supposed to get from 0.4 to 0.6 grams. Don't quote me on that because I didn't read the lab handout before I came down. Okay, you guys with me? Um, but what you would do is put this on the balance, you would let it zero, and then you would open the lid, put it on the balance beside the container, right? Why did I do that? So I still have the same mass, I'm going to remove with my scoop, right? And I think with the size scoop we have, it takes three to four scoops to get the 0.4 grams. You guys with me? When I get to that place, I'm close. 
I put the lid back on and I reweigh. Now, when I'm doing really accurate measurements, I actually don't touch this with my fingers. I actually use a chem wipe because your fingers weigh things, right? There's oil in them and they will put mass on there. And then in your, well, this balance isn't accurate enough to be worrying about that. But if I'm using one of the, the more analytical balances, those types of things become important, okay? Now, most of the time are we worried about fingerprints for most applications in lab? No, not for most applications, but there are times that we are, okay? And we'll work on that in quantitative analysis. So that's how you use a weighting bot, good? All right, and that's in the video also. All right, when you weigh it, you're gonna take and put it into an Erlenmeyer flask for the lab this week. You're gonna add some water. All right, you're gonna do a titration. You're gonna not forget the indicator. Chemical that changes color at a chemical significant point. And when I'm titrating, can you guys see this from back there? Or do I need to raise it up? Raising it up would be nice. Oops, I just dumped water on the mix. All right, when I'm titrating with this, I have, I like to turn the valve away from me, okay? And reach around, I'm gonna go a little bit higher for comfort. And when I start titrating, I get it swirling, and then I start delivering my liquid. Okay, you guys with me? And so I open my valve, I can see the tip right now, and I can see how much is coming out. And if I want to stream, I can stream. If I want to drop, I can back it down to where it's drop wise. And then when I'm getting close and the color staying, then I can shut it down. Okay. And I can see all of that and do the titration at the same time. Cool. You guys with me? So I would have read it beforehand and now I would read it after. And I would have the volume phase, final volume initial to be able to see how much is delivered. Now, if I know the concentration of this very accurately and I know the volume I delivered, what can I get to if I have moles per liter? Moles, right? And then if I can get to moles and I have a chemical reaction, then I, can I know the moles of the thing it reacted with in here? Yeah. And if I know the moles of what it reacted, I can get to the grams that were here, I can get to the concentration, depending on what we started with, okay? Or we're actually gonna get the molecular weight for our lab, cool? All right, so hopefully that was helpful. And it will make lab go a little smoother next week, right? But it's just timing, right? To, Put it all together. Um, we can also dilute solutions, right? There's another equation that we need, and gosh, learn this equation, right? It's a really straightforward. Your book actually uses um, M1 V1. Can I change that? Right? M1 being the molarity of solution one, right? I'm going to use a C. Okay, is that okay? And the reason I'm using C is because this is concentration because this works with molarity, it works with molality, it works with parts per million, it works, for parts, works with parts per million, and so on. You guys with me? Yeah, C1 times V1, concentration one times volume one equals C2 V2. C1, V1 equals C2, V2. Like I said, your book's gonna use M, all right? Which is molarity, but I, I use concentration because I want you to use this anytime you're diluting. So if, here's the question, if I take my 100 milliliters of 0 0.1 molar NaCl, right? And I dilute that to 1,000 milliliters, all right? What is the new concentration?
do what? So if we set that up, C1, what's the initial concentration? 0 0.1, right? Times the initial volume, which is 100 milliliters, right? And that equals 1,000 milliliters times X, right? And that has units. It's moles per liter, isn't it? Now, wait a minute. I didn't convert these from milliliters. Is that okay? Yeah, because those units are going to cancel, aren't they? They're going to go away, right? I just need that ratio is really what I'm looking at. So that means if I divide both sides by 1,000, right, then I now have my new concentration. Handy, right? We do dilutions all the time. We have stock solutions, which in fact, you're going to do one this week, or this coming week, not this week, but the next week. How do I say that? Am I saying that right? Yeah, in lab, you guys are gonna do it with a sodium hydroxide solution and have an approximate concentration, and then you're gonna do a titration to standardize it, to know it exactly, do a chemical reaction. So anyway, cool? All right, so this is showing dolution also showing something I talked about. Notice in this um, picture that I take this, transfer it into the flask, and I would do at least two rinses. You notice it's once it's transferred to the loop, then I would do two rinses, and that's a quantitative rinse. Okay, rinse two times to make sure that you move it all across. Cool, you guys with me? And then fill the volume. All right, preparation by dilution. All right. Three steps, three steps. Yeah, you guys with me? Three steps for the first calculation that we did. Make a 0.5 liter, a 0 0.25 molar sodium chloride solution. Could you guys do that one on your own now? It'd just be a different mass of sodium chloride. Can we actually do another example of that? Yeah. You want to do this one? Yeah. Okay. Alright. So, I'm trying to make a... 500 milliliters, right? You notice I just did that conversion in my head. Is that okay? 500 milliliters of <clears throat> 0.25 molar sodium chloride solution. So 0. Point, oh, I mean, I'll let you guys start. How do you, you guys go ahead and start? Make, to set up the calculation right now. What? Set up, why would you change it to milliliters? Oh, I, I just, because I looked up there and I read that as milliliters. Okay. Instead of saying 0.5, because I'm a chemist and, and we use milliliters for most everything that we measure in a laboratory scale. Not always, but we do so commonly. I just see 0.5 liters, I see 500 milliliters. Okay. Okay. I'm just working on that conversion back and forth because you might have to do that. Okay. Yeah. Do what? No, it's just it's just five liters. I mean, or point five liters. So right now I'm doing my first conversion. Hopefully you've done the same thing where you 
started with the liters and then you put in your conversion from the concentration. And now I've got moles of NaCl. My second conversion from moles to grams. And so this is equal to the grams of NaCl that I would need to uh, dissolve in my half liter volumetric flask, right, to make that solution. Six pigs. So you would be a two sig pig, so it'd be seven point three. Cool. You guys got that? Yeah. Pretty straightforward. All right. Now you guys realize you're starting to use these mole calculations. When we started them, was it like, oh my gosh, how do I do this? And we put up that weird road map. One to the next couple slides. All right. Because you need that sometimes. All right. How about the next one? You need to make half a liter of 0.1 molar HCl, and you're going to make it from a concentrated solution. So we have stock bottles of concentrated HCl upstairs, right? And so that concentrated HCl is 11.7 molar, and you need to make a 0.1 molar. How much concentrated HCl do I need is the question. How much concentrated HCl do I need? What's the volume of it? What, what equation are you going to use? C1, V1 equals C2, V2. All right, see if you can't set that up. Could you do it by moles? Yeah. You could. It's easier to ratio it in this case. Anybody have the volume? Four. 
So, and technically, I only have one sig fig right there, so it should be four. I need to change that. Cool, you guys got it? That help to go over those again? Well, you, you're left with leaders, I think. Your moles per liter cancel, your concentration or big M if you use big M. All right. Titrations, here we are. This is the color, it's a little bit dark in my opinion, you're going to be looking for in your titration in lab next week. That's phenol phthalene, right? And so the phenol phthalene is a color indicator, it changes. Um, I guess PKA is about eight. I have to look that up um, to know for sure, but it changes in the steep part of a pH curve. And so that color change um, from uh, being acidic to basic. So we'll put the base, the sodium hydroxide for the titration into the burette, and we'll have the acid in the flask. And so when it becomes basic, then the molecule in there deprotonates and changes color. Okay. Cool, you guys with me? Yeah. And so that's what we're gonna see. And so when we're doing titrations, then we're gonna have the volume of our titrant, right? And the concentration of it to get the moles of it. Or we could have the volume of it and the moles measured by another method, right? Or by mass with the KHP, for example, to calculate the volume or the concentration of solution. And so we can work anywhere in this to get the answer that we need, okay? So we're using this, we're gonna manipulate this. And so anyway, here's an example calculation for a titration, all right? Probably have time for this one. A sample of lye, sodium hydroxide, is neutralized by sulfuric acid. How many milliliters of 0.200 molar H2SO4 are needed to react completely with 25 milliliters of 0.400 molar sodium hydroxide. Where are you starting at? Which color, red or blue? Why are you starting with blue? Because I have volume and concentration, which gives me what? Moles. You guys with me? The other one I just have the concentration, it's asking me how much of that do I need? You guys catch that? So when I'm seeing one of these, I'm automatically looking for how can I get the moles? That's how I know how to set this up. And so I'm starting with the volume and concentration to get to moles of sodium hydroxide and then I'm gonna go from moles of sodium hydroxide through a balanced chemical equation to moles of sulfuric acid, right? And then from moles of sulfuric acid to the volume that I need to do the titration with. You guys with me? Yeah, because I have that concentration of sulfuric acid. So I'm filling in the ones that I don't have. Cool? All right. You guys ready? Can you do this? All right, try to set it up. Try to set it up. You're gonna start with the volume.
we really need something right now. What's the mole ratio of sodium hydroxide to sulfuric acid? We need a balanced chemical equation, don't we? So if I start writing that, then I have H2SO4, right? Aqueous plus NaOH aqueous. And now that yields, you guys already know what this is going to yield. What's it going to yield? A salt, right? Plus water. Uh, what's the salt? I'll get the water. Na2SO4 aqueous. Okay? Now, is that balanced? No. No? In fact, I need a two where? And there. there. And where else? The water. The water. So now is it balanced? So what's my mole ratio from sodium hydroxide to sulfuric acid? It's two to one, right? So that means that when I'm putting in my mole conversion right here, then one mole H2SO4 to two moles NaOH. Now do you guys see why it's important to put that in instead of, hey, just always using one to one or ignoring it? Because sometimes this happens. We have a different than one to one mole ratio. Okay? And then I've got one more step to get to volume of this. What is it? I've got one more step. How many milliliters are needed? What's my last step? Times one. Liter over 0 0.200 mole. And so now I've converted to liters of H2SO4, and I guess I need one more conversion, don't I? Because it asks for milliliters. What's the milliliters? Huh? Uh, I don't know. I, I've got it right here. So we'll go to liters. You have to be 1,000. So 25 milliliters is the final answer. Cool? You guys with me? Oh. These take a little practice, don't they? Once you get to where you can drive them, then it's, it's not too bad. Okay? Not too bad. When you get there, it can be tough. You'll make a few wrong turns. You'll end up in dark alleyways, those crazy kinds of things. Have a great day, guys.